So good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. Uh, depending on what time of the day you are listening to this lecture, this is Financial Accounting uh, 101, Chapter 4, Accrual Accounting Concepts. In this chapter, we're going to be looking at four learning objectives. We're going to explain the accrual basis of accounting and the reason for adjusting entries. Number two, we're going to prepare adjusting entries for deferrals. Number three, we're going to prepare adjusting entries for accruals. And number four, we're going to prepare an adjusted end trial balance and closing entry. So let's take this right together. Learning objective one, explaining the accrual basis of accounting and the reason why we are adjusting entries. Okay, so why are we adjusting entries? Why do we have that even as a topic? Um, we know that um, accountants divide the economic life of a business into artificial periods. So it could be one month, it could be quarterly, it could be by year. Okay, some even do mid-year, half of the month. All right, so uh, main transactions affect more than one of these periods. Right, determining the amount of revenue and expense to report in a given period can be a little bit um, difficult. Okay, so reporting periods can be from year, uh, from January to 31st of um, December. Okay, now in order for us to properly understand this reporting. Um, for companies, we have two principles that are used as guidelines and one of it is the revenue recognition principle and the other is going to be the expense recognition principle. Okay, so the revenue recognition principle um, recognizes revenue in the accounting period in which the obligation was satisfied. Okay, so when a company agrees to perform a service or sells a product to a customer, it has created a performance obligation. Okay, so the period in which that performance obligation is um, satisfied, we want to recognize what revenue. So a service company recognizes revenue when the services are performed, and revenue recognition results in five main processes. Okay, so the first one here is. You want to be able to identify the contract with the customer. A contract is usually an agreement between two parties that create enforceable rights, obligation. Okay. So, for example, Sierra has a contract with the Lewis family to provide service guards. Okay. Number two, identify the separate performance obligations in the contract. So, in the example we have before, ahead, Sierra has only one performance obligation to provide guide services. If Sierra also agrees to sell the customer camping equipment, a separate performance obligation is recorded for this promise. Okay, so here we're saying identifying the separate performance uh, obligation in the contract individual. Okay, then next we say determine the transaction price. The transaction price is the amount of consideration that a company expects to receive from a customer in exchange for transfer of goods and services. So in this example, the transaction price for Sierra is 1500 Okay. Next, um, we allocate the transaction price to the separate performance obligation. Right. So Sierra has only one performance obligation. To provide guide services to the Lewis family. Okay. All right. The fifth thing is to recognize revenue when each performance obligation is satisfied. So Sierra revenue recognizes revenue of one thousand five hundred for providing guide services to the Lewis family when it satisfies its performance obligation, the completion of the guided trips. Okay, so we are recognizing our revenue as soon as we have um, done our own part of our obligation. Whether we have the money or we have gotten the 1,005 from the customer or not. Okay. 
accrual basis and expense recognition. Okay, expense recognition principle um, requires that effort that's expenses be matched with the accomplished revenue. Okay, so companies recognize expenses in the period in which they make effort, consume asset, or incur liability to generate that revenue. So what we're saying is that let the expenses follow the revenue. Okay, let the expenses follow the revenue. So you are matching um, the revenue that the performance with the expenses you needed to um, pay for in order to make that revenue come about. Okay, um, revenue and expense recognition, right? So periodicity. We talk about periodicity, periodicity where we have to divide our the economic life of a business into periods. They said month. Um, it could be quarterly. It could be mid year. It could be one year. Okay. Um, under expenses recognition, we're saying recognize expenses with revenue in the period when the company makes effort to generate those revenue. Okay, and revenue and expense recognitions are in accordance with GAAP accounting principles. Okay, GAAP. All right, uh, revenue recognition, we talked about that too. Recognize revenue in the accounting period in which the performance is being satisfied all right so accrual versus cash basis accounting accrual basis accounting what does it mean um the accrual basis accounting means that transactions that change a firm's financial statement are recorded in the period in which the event occurs even if cash was not exchanged okay so companies recognize revenue when they perform services, when they perform services rather than when cash is received. Okay? And expenses are recognized when incurred rather than when they are paid. Okay, so that's all the, the background to accrual basis of accounting. You are recording transaction when that obligation has been performed, not necessarily when uh, you have received money for it. The same thing has to do with expenses, that you are recognizing this expense regardless of whether you have paid for it or whether you have not paid for it, okay? And the um, accrual basis of accounting is in accordance with GAAP, that is the Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. We also have what we call the cash basis, okay? Uh, this does not satisfy the generally acceptable accounting principles. Um, just like we said in the uh, for the accrual base of accounting. Um, but cash base of accounting recognizes revenue when cash is received. Okay, so you only recognize revenue when you receive cash. Expenses, you only recognize that expense when you make payments, right, for your expenses so you don't record it until you have actually until cash has actually been paid out okay so we are comparing accrual basis versus the cash basis okay now we look at the activity purchase paint painted building and paid employees that's 2021 okay uh received payment for work done in 2021 okay on the accrual basis, right? We have eighty thousand for revenue. We have expenses of fifty thousand, um, a net income of say thirty. Okay. Um, in twenty twenty, under the accrual basis, we are not recognizing anything, even though you received the payment for work done, right? In twenty twenty one, you received in 2020, 2022. You have already recorded that um revenue and expense already in twenty twenty one. Okay, that's for accrual. On a cash basis, right, you have a revenue of um, or of 80000 but you didn't receive payment for it until when? 2022. So for the year 2021, our revenue is going to be zero. We paid actual money for the expense, 50000 in 2021, okay, because cash actually went out. Right, but in 2022, 
um, everything is good, right? Only that we have revenue of 80,000. And so here in 2021, we have, seems we have a loss of 50. And in 2022, we have a net income of 80,000. So we are able to see um, the accrual basis and the um, cash basis. So again, don't forget that the accrual basis, um, regardless of whether you receive money, right? You want to recognize it. You want to recognize that um, performance has been done and you have received that revenue even though you have not received the actual cash. And for cash basis, even though you have performed the obligation, until you receive the cash, you don't record it in your books. And until you have actually made payment, cash payment for expenses, you don't record it in your book. Okay? All right, so need for adjusted entries to ensure that the revenue recognition and the expense principles are followed. And that's why we do the adjusted principle. We want to make sure that our revenue recognition and expenses recognition are followed. Number two, necessarily because the trial balance may not contain up-to-date and complete data. Okay? And they're required every time a company prepares financial statement. Right? So we need to... Adjust our entries every single time we need to prepare the financial statements. We'll include one income statement account and one balance sheet account. Okay, so this is going to be in line with your discussion, right? So for every adjusted entry, it will include one income statement account and then they're going to find it also in the balance sheet account. Okay, so categories of um, adjusted entries. So these are the divisions. Okay, so we have prepaid expenses. Expenses paid in cash before they are used or consumed. Okay, so um, any money, any amount you are paying for before it's consumed, right? That is prepaid expense. And a very good example is insurance, right? You pay your insurance ahead of time, okay, before it is consumed. That is prepaid insurance. Okay, so expenses paid in cash before they are used on code. That's called deferrals. Okay. Um, we also have on end revenue. We discuss this uh, uh, often, or we have discussed this before, right? We say that on end revenue is cash received before the services are actually performed. Okay, this is cash received before services are actually performed. The example is the airline, right? You pay for your services, uh, you pay to get on the on the plane, maybe in the next two months. So the airline, that is an unearned revenue because it's cash they have received before they have given you the service of taking you to where you need to be. So that is another, that is a deferral category of adjusted entries. Under our quarrels, we have accrued revenue, right? Re re revenue for services performed, but not yet received in cash or recorded. All right. So we have accruals right accrued a revenue you have performed the services but you have not actually received the cash or you've not recorded it in the book so take note of the cash or recorded okay so it's not just you have not received cash but also it has not been recorded in the book that becomes an accrued revenue we also have accrued expenses expenses incurred but not yet paid in cash or recorded again take note of the recorded this is um expenses that has been incurred but you know you have not yet paid cash from it okay so the deferrals have to do with prepaid something that you are done before the services is received right and then the accruals have to do that with uh you already performed the service but you have not actually paid for it okay so we need adjusted entries for those ones okay all right so this is our trial balance subsequent examples are based on this trial balance from chapter three so this um, trial balance came from chapter three. Let's just take a quick look. Many at times you are able to follow this um, trial balances and diagrams um, on our textbook. All right, so let's do it. Time concept, all right? Below is a list of timing concepts in the left column with a description of the concept in the right column. There are more descriptions provided than concepts, okay? So match the description to the concept. So what is accrual basis of accounting? Are you guessing? Did you get it? F. Companies record transaction in the period in which the event occurs, okay? How about calendar year? E. 
So a calendar year, an accounting period that starts from January 1 and ends December 31st. What is periodicity assumption? C, good. Accounting dividing the economic life of a business into artificial periods. And what is our expense recognition principle? There we go, B, right? Efforts our ex um, should be matched with the results you know which is the revenue all right so we're going into learning objective to prepare adjusted entries for deferrals okay how do we um prepare adjusted entries for our deferrals all right so remember that um chain which we're looking at in the last class uh where we analyzed we journalized we posted and we did the trial balance in chapter two now we're going to go into journalize the posts and post to adjusted journal entries. That's the AJES, adjusted journal entries. All right. And then we're going to prepare our adjusted trial balance. We're going to have a financial statement, closing entries, and post closing trial balance. All right. Let's take this ride. Okay. So deferrals are costs or revenue that are recognized at a date later than the point when the cash was originally exchange okay so we said we have two types of deferrals we're already talking about that that's the prepaid expenses and the unearned revenue okay so now we're going to deal with prepaid expenses payments of expenses that are recorded as assets okay to show that the service or benefits the company will receive in the future so we have cash payments before expenses are recorded you have paid it ahead of time so let's assume it's your insurance or your rent you paid your rent for um a whole 12 month right and you pay 50 dollars a month for rent right the whole of that 50 dollars times your 12 should give us i think 600 right and the cash that you receive before your expenses so every single month you're going to be expensing $50 until the whole $600 is uh, used up. So prepayment often occurs in regards to insurance, supplies, advertising, rent, equipment, buildings. Okay, where you pay ahead of time. All right, so it expires either with the passage of time or through use. Okay, so adjusted entries for prepared expenses is to increase your debits to an expense account and decrease to an asset account so what does that mean this is our asset account right um on adjusted balance right then each time because the prepared expenses is an asset right it should have a debit balance we remember that right and each time let's say at the end of the month we have to um expense for that month like the rent i told you about fifty dollars we're going to have to credit our um, asset account and debit our expense account with how much? $50. Okay? So, for us to adjust, to do this adjusted entry again, you want to reduce your assets and then increase the expense side. Okay? With $50. And so, every single month, you're going to do the same thing until that prepaid expenses is actually used up. All right, so this is an example with regards to supplies. Okay, so Sierra Corporation purchased supplies costing 2500 on October 5. Okay, Sierra recorded the payments by increasing, that is debiting the asset supplies. Okay, this account shows a balance of 2500 in October 30th trial balance. An inventory count at the close of business on October 31st reveals that 1,000 of supplies are still on hand. Okay? So, we're saying that at the beginning of the month, um, he bought 2,005 of supplies. Right? But on 31st of October, um, all he has left is what? 1,000. Okay? Okay? So we have supply expense of how much? 1,000. How did we get the 1,005? What we have left subtracted from what we had at the beginning. 
okay so it's gonna be a debit to supply expense account and a credit to supply so the supply expense is what was used up the supply here is an asset okay so again we are crediting the asset and debiting the expense account okay so this is the explanation of what happened basic analysis the expense supply the expense supply expense is increased right by 1500 the asset supply is decreased by how much 1500 again how will we get that amount because we started with 2500 at the beginning we ended at the end of the period what we had left was 1000 in order to know what was used up we did subtract what we had at the beginning and subtract from subtract it from what we have at the end and that gave us 1005 so it tells us that we used up 1005 that was the expense that was used in that period all right so equation analysis assets which is supplies is reduced by 1005 okay our stockholders equity which is the supply expense is also is increased by what 1500 okay so debit credit analysis debit increase in expenses that is 1005 credit decrease in assets okay and that is 1005 remember for every debit entry you must have a corresponding credit entry and so we have our journal entry here we have october 1 supply expense 1005 which is debit we explained that already our supplies 1005 which is a credit remember our short note here to record supplies used okay and then we post to the ledger okay october 5 we started with 2500 the what we have at the balance is what 1000 subtract this two it gives us an adjustment of 1500 okay that is for supplies for a supply expenses okay so supply is an asset supply expenses is an expense so october 31st adjusted entry 1005 because it's a debit when we balance our ledger for the month our balance at the end of the month is what 1500 all right so this is another question on october 4 sierra corporation paid 600 for one year fire insurance policy coverage began when on october 1 sierra recorded the payment by increasing debit that's prepaid insurance right 60 for 600 this account shows a balance of 600 in the in the october 31st trial balance insurance of 50 dollars um expires every single month so they paid six hundred dollars for one year fire insurance right and that fire insurance began in october 1 so every single month what will expire from the insurance is going to be what fifty dollars okay so with the fifty dollars we're going to expense that every six months every 12 every month for the next 12 months okay so let's see how this goes so it's gonna be um october 31st a debit to insurance uh, expense fifty dollars and a credit again to the asset account which is fifty dollars all right so this is the analysis right so equation is our asset account is reduced by fifty dollars and which also increases our our expense account by fifty dollars okay so the expense insurance expense is increased by 50 and the asset prepaid insurance is decreased by 50. again an increase in expenses you want to debit in a decrease in assets you want to what uh credit okay and then we post that to the journal entry october 31st insurance expense 50 prepaid insurance 50 to record the insurance um that's going to expire that's the notes to the account now when we post to the ledger we see that october 4 they bought the prepaid insurance for 600 it's a debit entry because that's an increase in the prepaid uh, which is an asset so we debit it and then october 31st we paid 50 dollars from the prepaid insurance our balance in the prepared um, insurance is what 550 okay and then insurance expense account we have an adjusted of 50 october 31st balance is what 50 okay that's what we have as our balance that will go into the trial balance
All right, so another thing here is depreciation. Okay, we're, I think we're still dealing with uh, the variables. Um, building equipment and motor vehicles, assets that provide services for many years are recorded as assets rather than what expenses on the date acquired. Okay, so you acquire your assets, but many times we record it as an asset. We don't record it what as an expense. When we begin to depreciate, then we begin to allocate the cost of the asset to expense it over its useful life. Okay, so depreciation does not attempt to report the actual change in the value of assets. What we are doing when we depreciate is that we are allocating the cost of the assets right over its useful life all right so an allocation concept not a valuation concept okay so it's more of a location and not valuation when we talk about depreciation all right so for sierra corporation assume that depreciation on the asset is 480 a year or 40 dollars per month okay so um again depreciation expense is going to be debited 40 dollars for the month Right, and accumulated depreciation is gonna be credited, all right, at the as our credit um entry. All right, so, so we see that they debited it or credited it to um, accumulated depreciation, right? So this accumulated depreciation under normal circumstances should have been the asset account, but we do not um directly reduce the asset account. What this accumulated depreciation represents is what we call a contra account. Okay, so such an account upsets us upsets <laughs> against an asset account of the balance sheet. Okay, so we call it a contra account, and we're going to explain contra account as we go. But for the sake of the asset, again, we do not directly um, credit that account. We credit this to an accumulated depreciation account and the accumulated depreciation account is a contra account okay all right so this is the adjustment for depreciation the basis analysis we talked about it again the expense depreciation expense is increased 40 40 000, 40 dollars the contra assets right that's the accumulated depreciation um equipment is increased by what 40 all right, so that was an increase um, to the accumulated depreciation, and that's uh, why we have, and then the liabilities plus stockholders' equity, which is the depreciation expense, which is also um, an increase, okay? So because of the increase in the contra entry, which is the accumulated depreciation, it is a credit, right? And then an increase in the depreciation expense is actually a debit. All right, so we have depreciation expense 40 and accumulated depreciation for the equipment, which is also a 40. It's a credit, which is also a 40. Okay, so don't forget that the accumulated depreciation expense um, is an, a contra. So adjustments for depreciation, we have a general entry, dep uh, depreciation expense 40, accumulated depreciation 40. Usually you write the name of the assets here, accumulated depreciation dash if it's equipment or computer or whatever the name of that asset is, it's going to be included here. And that's 40. All right. So posting to the ledger, we have equipment, the body for 5,000. Our expenses is um, for the adjusted entry, we have 40. Our balance at the end of the month is so it's 40. This 40 goes to the trial balance. The 5,000 here goes to the trial balance. Our accumulated depreciation, right? This is a contra entry for the equipment. Again, you do not take out the credit side of the um, accumulated depreciation from the equipment, right? We have to have its own, a separate account, which again would term to be accumulated depreciation, contra entry to the equipment account. And we have that as 40, okay? And the balance here is also 40. Okay. Accumulated depreciation, a contra asset account with a normal balance with a normal credit balance. So the contra asset account is usually what a credit balance. Okay. Offsets the related asset account on the balance sheet. Right. So when we go to the balance sheet, we're going to show you an example. You're going to see how the accumulated depreciation is taken out of the equipment account. 
right? So book value is the difference between the cost of the depreciable assets and its accumulated depreciation. Okay, so the book value is the difference between the cost of any depreciable assets and its accumulated depreciation. So that gives you the book value. So you're looking at what did it cost me and then what is um, um, the depreciation. When you subtract it, that becomes the book value of the assets. Okay, so here we have equipment, less accumulated depreciation. Our book value becomes what? 4,960. Okay. All right, so prepared expenses, accounting for prepared expenses, example, insurance, supplies, advertising, rent, depreciation, right? These are examples of prepared expenses, and we dealt with each one. We dealt with insurance, we dealt with supplies, and we dealt with depreciation, okay? So reason for adjustment, prepared expenses originally recorded in an asset account have been used, okay? So we have recorded these prepared expenses in the asset. Each time we use a portion of that asset we expense it okay accounts before adjustment assets is overstated so if we do not adjust the asset account right our asset is going to remain overstated and your expenses will be what understated all right so because of that we want to right we want to adjust by debiting the expense crediting the asset account or the contra asset account in order to balance it out and make everything look good okay now we go to an end revenue receipt of cash before the service is performed it is recorded as a liability that's an unearned revenue okay cash receipts uh before revenue is recorded okay so you have received the cash right before you actually perform the service on end revenue often occurs in regards to rent air tickets magazine subscription and customers deposits all right so adjusted entries is made to record the revenue for services performed during the period and to show the liabilities that remain at the end of the period so on end revenue is a liability to the company right who has not yet performed that service right results in a decrease debit to liability account and an increase credit to the revenue account okay so once the promise is performed we debit that liability account right so as to exit out and then we credit the revenue account um like it should have been okay all right so this is an example sierra corporation received 1200 on october 2 from Aaron Knox for advertising ex services expected to be completed by December 31st. On end service revenue show a balance of 1,200 in the October 31st trial balance. Analysis revealed that the company performed how much? 400 of the services in October. So in this question, we are seeing that um, they received 1,002 for advertising purposes, right? To be completed by December 31st right so out of the on that was posted to the on end service revenue because they have not performed that service for the company all right um but as of 31st of october um the trial the um analysis revealed that the company had performed how much only 400 of the 1002 so what will be the adjusted entries so we're going to debit our on earned service revenue and credit service revenue okay before now the 1002 was a credit to an end service revenue and a debit to cash okay now look at what the analysis is the liability on end service revenue is decreased 400 the revenue service revenue is increased by what 400 okay what assets or accounts are involved we have the liability right and the stockholders equity so here we have an increase, okay? We have an inc a, a decrease in our on end in liability and a decrease in liability is a what? A debit. And then to the service revenue, um, which is an increase, an increase in, in revenue is what? It's a credit also, it's a credit, sorry. So debit decreases liability 
and credit increases what revenue okay each of them by four hundred dollars and then we do our journal entry on end service revenue 400 service revenue 400 okay and then when we are done with our journal entries with your notes then you post it to the account um on end service revenue adjusted entry 400 um service revenue was 1002 so still remaining in our on end service revenue is a balance of how much 800 dollars so as we perform um the services right then we begin to recognize and adjust to the right place and then service revenue is a credit because they have performed four hundred dollars worth of the service okay all right accounting for on end revenues these are the examples again we have rents magazines uh, subscription customers deposits for future services right on end revenue recorded in liability accounts are now recognized as revenue for services performed okay so what is the accounting account before the adjustment if you don't adjust what does the account look like right your liability is going to be overstated right because that service has been performed but you still have it in the on on end service revenue right and then your revenue is going to be understated because you're not going to have anything there so what do we have to do you debit your liability to reduce it and then to make your revenue come up to par you're going to credit it and at that point everything is balanced out okay so we have a do it um adjusted entries deferrals um the ledger of harmon inc on march 31st 2022 includes this selected account before adjusted entries are prepared prepaid insurance supplies equipment right um and then our credit we have accumulated depreciation for equipment five thousand on end service revenue is nine thousand two hundred okay so this is what our trial balance or our ledgers look like these are the balances now an analysis of the account show the following right insurance expires at the rate of hundred dollars per month right so it's going to affect our prepaid insurance right here supply on hand total what 800 right so what was our supply at the beginning 2800 right um what again the equipment depreciates at 200 dollars a month and we have for 25,000 25, so um out of this 25,000 i'm accumulated distribution we're going to have 200 dollars okay during March, services were performed for 4,000 of unearned service revenue reported. Prepare the adjusted entries for the month of March. Okay, so let's do this together. I want us to try it together. If you are able to do it on your own first before you um, see what the answer will look like, that would be great. Uh, so you can pause and try to see if you can solve it first and then compare your answers. Okay, so insurance expires at the rate of 100. We're doing the first one. So that's going to be um, a debit to insurance expense account and a credit. Okay, that's going to be a credit to our um, asset account, which is the prepaid insurance. Okay, the next one is supply on hand, total 800. Um, what we had initially was 2,800. So it tells us that when we subtract the 2,008 from the 800, it gives us 2,000, right? It tells us that we use how much supplies expense 2,000 and we're going to have uh, supplies as 2,000, okay? So what I did was just subtract the 2,800, which is the beginning from what we have at the end, which is 800, to tell me what I used in between, okay? Um, the, the equipment depreciates $200 a month, right? So that's going to be a debit, to our depreciation expense for 200 and a credit to accumulated depreciation of how much? $200. Okay? During March, services were performed for 4000 of the on-end revenue reported. Okay? That's going to be a debit to uh, on-end revenue of 4000 and rev service revenue 4000 credit because um, it's a reduction in liability and an increase in revenue. Okay, and that brings us to the end of learning objective. Um, so now we're going to be doing the prepared adjusted entries for our corals. 
Um, adjusting the interest for our corals. Our corals are made to are made uh, to record revenues for services performed, but not yet recorded at the statement date. Okay, so maybe you had a revenue or a service that you performed, but you have not yet recorded in your book. Um, then you are making an adjusted entry for that. Um, expenses incurred but not yet paid or recorded at the statement date. Okay, so you made these expenses, but it's not yet recorded. Then you want to take that into consideration when you are doing your adjusted entry. Remember, we're still in journalized and posting to um, the adjusted journal entries. Revenue for services performed but not yet received in cash or recorded. Okay, so revenue recorded before you receive the actual cash. Accrued revenue occurs for interest earned or services that have been uh, performed. So maybe the interest that you have earned for money that you borrowed, but you have not actually received uh, the cash or the payment for that interest that you earned. Or you perform service to a customer and they have not actually paid you for that service. Also for rent, uh, rent, rentals. Okay, so accrued revenue adjusting entries uh, records the receivable that exists and records the revenue for services that are being performed. All right, so adjusted entries increases an asset account with a debit. Okay, so because you're receiving either cash, you are increasing your assets. Okay. And increasing your revenue account with a credit okay all right so in October uh, in October Sierra Corporation performed services worth $200 that were not billed to the client on or before the 31st of October okay so they performed that service they didn't bill the client and they did not they did not receive the money okay so October 31st, it's accounts receivable. We're receivable because we have not received the money. Okay, so accounts receivable. And then service revenue is credited. Okay, um, because the services has actually been performed. It's just that like you have not yet received the cash. On November 10th, Sierra received cash of 200 for the services performed. Okay, so we're going to have to debit our cash, which is assets. Our accounts receivable is going to reduce because we've actually now received the money. We are no longer expecting to receive it. We already received it. So it's going to reduce. So that's accounts receivable 200, which is a credit. And that um, cancels out the accounts receivable account. Okay. All right. So this is just an explanation of what we've done before. We are looking at the basic analysis. The asset account, which is receivable, is increased by 200, right? And the service revenue increasing by 200. Again, we are recognizing the, ref the revenue in the time when the services is being performed. Obligation is being performed, right? Even though we have not received cash. And because we have not received cash, that's why it goes to the accounts receivable account. Okay, so accounts receivable 200. Um, the stockholders equity, it's an increase in revenue and that an increase in revenue is also a credit entry. Okay, so debit credit analysis, debit increase assets, credit increases revenue. Okay, so we debit assets receivable and credit service revenue. All right, so journal entry, the same like we said, accounts receivable is debit, service revenue is credit. And then we post that to our ledger. Accounting for accrued revenue. Example, interest service. We talked about this. Reasons for adjustment services performed but not yet received in cash. Or maybe you didn't even record it at all. Again, take note of that record. Right? So that when you see it on the test, you know that that's also a need for adjusted entry. Accounts before adjustment. Assets understated. Revenue understated. Okay. Adjusted entries. Debit assets. Credit revenue. Expenses incurred but not yet paid in cash or recorded. That's for the expense side. So you've made those expenses but you have not yet paid for them in cash. 
accrued expenses are usually uh, recognized for rent, insure, uh, interest, tax, salaries. Um, yeah, so stuff that you buy for vendors generally that you maybe you bought stuff to sell and then you have not yet paid them for it. Um, accrued expenses, adjusting entries record the obligation and recognizes the expense. Okay, so increase an expense account with a debit. So once your expense is done, you're increasing it with a debit and um, increasing your liability account with a credit. Okay, because you owe, that becomes an account payable. Increasing liability is a credit and increase in expenses is always a debit. Okay. Sierra Corporation signed a three month note payable in the amount of 5000 on October 1. The note requires Sierra to pay interest at an annual rate of 12%. Okay, so um, the face value is 5000 times the annual interest rate of 12000 times um, the term of this 1 over 12. That means it's one month, just October. We're trying to find out just for October. Which means that we are owed an interest of what fifty dollars just for that one month. Okay, so we're going to debit our expense increase in expenses debit. Um, increase in liability is a credit. Okay, so in interest payable. Okay, is fifty. Already, I hope I'm making sense in all of this. So again, this is just how to analyze it, just in case you didn't understand. But at the end of the day, we have always established that once you debit, uh, once you increase your expenses, you debit, and once you increase your liability, that's a credit entry. All right, accrued salary, Sierra Corporation pays salaries and wages on October 26. The next payment of salaries will not occur until November 9. The employees receive total salaries of 2000 for a five-day work week or 400 per day okay all right so there we go analysis the expense salary and wages expense is increased uh 1200 the liability salary expense and wages is increased by what 1200 because they have that expense that's been made and they have not yet made the payments to the customer or to the workers right so we are debiting right the expense and then crediting the um liability account which is salary and wages payable accounts okay interest rent ex um salaries we have established that before reasons for adjustment expenses have been incurred um but not yet paid in cash or recorded right so what's going to be the effect expenses is going to be understated okay because you didn't recognize it and your liability is going to also remain understated okay so what should you do you debit your expenses and credit your liabilities all right so this is a summary of all that we have done so far for the deferrals and the accruals um this is something you want to put at the back of your mind we're going to be working with this all through the whole class um, you don't want to joke with it. You want to really understand. If you have questions, again, please come up um, to the office hours. I could arrange time with you. But, you know, these are basic things that we need to understand and not uh, put aside. Okay. Uh, prepared expenses, asset overstated, expenses understated, debit expenses, credit asset or contract assets. Okay, on end revenue, liabilities overstated, revenue understated, debit liabilities and credit revenue. Okay, accrual revenue, we're saying assets will be understated. If you don't do anything, revenue will be understated. What do you must you do? You want to debit your assets and credit your revenue. And for accrual expenses, expenses understated and liabilities understated debit your expenses and credit your liabilities okay so this is just an example we're going to do it together um if you are able to pause just try it on your own see if you're able to get it 
um, before you attempt, you know, to see what the correct answers are. It's always good to try it because this is one course that you learn by doing, not just reading through um, solutions. Microcomputer services began operation on August 1, 2022. At the end of August 2022, management prepares monthly financial statement. The following information relates to August. Right at August 31st, the company owed its employees 800 in salaries and wages that will be paid September 1. Okay, so they owe, they have not paid as at this time. Okay, on August 1, the company borrowed 30,000 from a local bank on a 15 year mortgage. The annual interest rate is 10%. Okay, um, revenue for services performed but unrecorded for August totaled 1100 so the one was to prepare the adjusted entries all right so for the first one we're saying that the old the employees even though they're going to pay september 1 but as at august 31st it has not been paid so that's going to be a debit to our salaries and wages expense account and a credit to salaries and wages payable account okay it's because they owe them all right, on August 1, the company borrowed money, right, from a local bank on that 15-year mortgage. Um, but one of the annual rate is what, 10%. But we want to know what is due to us for this month, right? So we multiply. Um, so interest expense is 25, uh, 250 for this month. And then the interest, uh, the interest payable is going to be what, 250 Okay, so we get this by multiplying um, the 30,000, right, times 10, divided by 100, right, times, or divided by 12. Okay, that gives you 250, because we're only dealing with just one month. All right, so re revenue for the services performed on unrecorded for August that's going to be um, accounts receivable, 1,100, and a credit to service revenue of 1,100. So for each example that we have done, or for each transaction that takes place, you want to be able to understand what's going on. Okay, and then once you're able to understand what's going on, then you're able to know what you're debiting, and then what you're going to be crediting. So we're going into the last... Um, Learning objective, we're preparing our adjusted trial balance and then the closing entries. Okay, so adjusted trial balance and then um, the closing entries. Okay, all right, so prepare after the adjusted entries are generalized and posted. So you prepare your adjusted trial balance after you have generalized and you have posted to the ledger. Okay, and then the new balance on the ledger is produced. And then from that ledger, we can get our post or adjusted trial balance. All right. So proves equality of debit and credit balances, like we said, and based on the preparation of our financial statements, we're going to use the adjusted trial balance to prepare our adjusted um, our financial statement. All right. So based on the examples we had, again, you can find this in your textbook um, on page uh, 424. Uh, we also have those on page, one minute, yeah, page 22, um, on all through downwards, you're going to find out the adjustments, and the adjustments we have here are in red, okay, they're all in red, we're able to see from the accounts we have, um, how they're transferred, but mostly it's the balances that were transferred, and these were the accounts that were affected, Okay, at the end of the day, our adjusted balance sheet is the trial balance is the same. That makes us feel like, I mean, to a, to a good extent that we're on track. Okay, so preparing the financial statement. Our financial statement are, are prepared directly from the adjusted trial balance. From the adjusted trial balance, we can prepare our income statement, return earnings, the balance sheet. Okay. All right, so here we go. The last part here, the service revenue, income statement, we start with our revenue, okay? We have 10,600, that's it right there. 
all our expenses salary and wages expense supply expense rent expense insurance expense interest expense and depreciation expense all here the total of our expenses is seven thousand seven hundred and forty when we deduct our total expense from the revenue it gives us a net income of two thousand eight hundred and sixty okay whatever we have gotten from our income statement as net profit is transferred to our returned earnings so from the adjusted trial balance we don't have any beginning balance and that's why october 1 it's a zero okay then we add our net income of 2860 um we're told they paid dividend of 50 or 500 and there we go so our returned earnings um october 31st is 2360 this amount goes to where the balance sheet okay now this is our balance sheet you see the upper part and that's why we went with the um the, the assets for us the liabilities and then we had the statement of return earnings and then we had the income statement remember that order we we, we talked about um uh, so everything in the top here goes into the balance sheet okay so we have our cash accounts receivable supplies prepaid insurance expense and all that that gives us a total of 21,910 okay so liabilities the same thing came from the trial adjusted trial balance and we have a total liability of 9,550 then the statement of return and remember this amount that we got we add that to our stock um common stock and that gives us 12,360 when we add that together again our assets will always equals to liability plus stockholders equity if at the end of this balance sheet you do not balance they're not the same then you have made a mistake somewhere okay so we're going to go through this example together again you want to just pause and see if you can do it on your own um this question you can find it on uh page 25 of your textbook all right um this company was organized on April 1, 2022. The company prepares quarterly financial statement. The adjusted trial balance at 38 as shown. So this is the adjusted trial balance. Okay, so determine the net income for the year. So we're going to do our income statement. We're going to start with revenue. Service revenue is that rent, right? Total revenue. So we have like two revenues in the question. The service revenue and the rent revenue. We add them together. That gives us 1500 uh, then we have our expenses, salary and wages. Remember, these are gotten from the question. Okay, we're just plugging in. Um, rent expense, depreciation expense, utilities, supply expense, insurance. Total expenses give us 12510 We subtract that to get our net income of 2490 And where do we take this amount to? To our statement of returned earnings. All right, determine the total asset and total liabilities at June 30th, 2022. Okay, um, cash, accounts receivable, um, prepaid rent, uh, supplies 1,000, equipment 15, accumulated depreciation, you see, subtracted from the equipment, that's the contract account. Total assets is equals to 23350 23, Then we have notes payable, accounts payable, salaries and wages, interest payable on end revenue. Total liabilities is 7000 Okay. So that just total, total assets and total liabilities. Determine the amount of return earnings. Then we have our return earnings at the beginning. We didn't have anything, so it's a zero. We're adding the net income that we calculated in the question uh, previously, which was 2490 We had a dividend from the question of 600 and that gives us a return ending for June 30th to be 18, uh, 1890 right? And those goes to the, way, the balance sheet, okay? Uh, closing the book, at the end of the accounting period, the company makes the account ready for the next period so they're going to close the entries right so we have temporary and permanent accounts so temporary accounts are accounts are closed so 
uh, they are closed every single month. The permanent accounts are not closed. So all our closing accounts are what? Revenue accounts, expense account, and dividend. The permanent accounts are the assets, the liabilities, and the stockholders' equity. You don't want to close out your your liability account, uh, your liability or your asset account, right? So it's the uh, all accounts like we have the revenue, the expense, and then the dividend. Those are the temporary accounts. Um, closing entry summary recognized in the ledger the transfer of net income or net loss to the returned earnings. Owners draw to the returned earnings, okay? And produce a zero balance in each of the temporary accounts. So we are making each of the temporary accounts to become a zero so that we can start afresh in the net accounting period. Generally generalized and posted only at the end of the annual accounting period, okay? So, um, we have already established that the revenue and the expense account and the dividend are the temporary accounts and we need to close them out to be zero. Okay, so revenue goes into the income summary, expense to the income summary, and that goes to the returned earnings, and then the dividend goes directly to the statement of returned earnings. Okay. All right, so close revenue and expense account. We have service revenue. We're going to debit what we had there, which was 10600 right? And transfer it to the income summary to close the revenue account, okay? So once we debit what we have in service revenue, it makes the service uh, revenue to become a zero, okay? And then we are going to um, debit our income summary and then um credit our expense right we're doing the opposite in order to make them a zero that's the goal to make our temporary accounts to become zeros okay income summary right returned earnings that is 2860 is transferred uh to returned earnings that's the amount which is a credit to the returned earnings and their returned earnings 500 dividend um, is 500 to close the dividend account okay usually the dividend will have been a debit uh, uh, balance but because we're closing it okay the returned earnings is going to be a debit to it okay 500 dollars and a credit to um the dividend account All right, so this is the general picture of the closing. So all of this close, the supply expense, every one of them, right? Move, the total of them all is moved to the income summary, okay? Income summary. From here, you credit, 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 and debit the income summary, okay? And then the service revenue is debited in service revenue and credited in income summary. We still have our balance profit, right, of 2860 This amount goes to our retained earnings. Okay. The dividend account comes into the returned earnings, right, as a debit to give us what is actually the balance, 2300 that will go into the balance sheet. So by now, all the expenses accounts are ready for the next month's transaction. Okay. Summary of account cycle. All right. So lastly, um, Hancock Company has the following balances in selected accounts of its adjusted trial balance, accounts payable, 2000 22,700, service revenue, 98,000, rent expense, 22, salaries and wages expense, 51, dividends, 15,000, return earnings for 32,000, accounts receivable, 38,000, supply expenses, 7,000, okay? All right, so the service revenue, we're going to debit it and send it to income summary, okay? During the, the regular balance for a revenue account is credit. Because we want to make it zero, that's why we're debiting, okay? And sending the credits to the income summary, all right? 
um, for the expenses. Income summary, the regular balance for expenses is debit. But because we want to dairy it out, we're going to be crediting the expenses and debiting our income summary. Okay. So there we have our, all our income, our expenses in the income summary. Again, the last thing is going to be um, income summary transferring to returned earnings, which is 18000 Returned earnings, okay? Our dividend account usually has a debit balance, but because we want to zero it out too, we are um, crediting it and debiting our returned earnings, okay? Um, for the last um, objective, which is an appendix to this chapter, we just describe the purpose and the basis of the form of a worksheet. Okay, so using a worksheet, multiple columns forms used in the adjusted adjustment process and in brain financial statement, not a permanent accounting record. Uh, maybe computerized, maybe you are using your Excel spreadsheet. Uh, use of worksheet is optional and prepared using five step processes. Okay, so this is what the worksheet looks like. You have your account titles. Um, you have your trial balance, you make your adjustments, and then you have your adjusted trial balance, right? Then you have your income statement, and from the income statement, you have your balance sheet. So this is what the worksheet looks like. Okay, so everything that we've done um, <clears throat> so far in this chapter is what we have here, beginning with our trial balance right here, adjustments, debit and credit, okay, 34... 3,400 and then we now have our adjusted trial balance okay and that gave us 30,190 right there and then we have our income statements um like we did just like you have this is just a spreadsheet that transfer all the information into just one place okay so we have our totals for revenue um to be 10,000 six ten thousand six hundred. And our net income is what 2860 total expenses is uh, 7740 okay these are just like a, a snapshot of everything that we have done the trial balance adjustment adjusted trial balance income statement then the balance sheet okay all right i know this was a pretty complex topic i just want us to take time to really go through to learn if you have questions don't keep it to yourself um, get on the call, um, office hours or on the call with the tutorials. That's why they are there to help you to see you through. Being online class doesn't mean you don't have contact with your teacher or you don't have contact with people that can help you. Okay, so I wish you all the best and success in your tests.